tourism as an industry hits here the same time as it hits everywhere. I mean, I could talk in general about, you know, tourism in the 1840s and, well, 1850s, let's say, when the rail, even early 1830s when the railway is approaching the Canadian border, you know, but primarily 1840s and 50s. That's when you have the beginning of what we call popular tourism. Before that, it's individual well-to-do travelers. And um, then my material tends to shift from travel narratives, you know, uh, which, you know, autobi autobiographical memoirs, to tourist promotional literature because you move towards travelers in places unless you're, you're the travelers are trying to get away from where everybody else goes right so then you'll have travel narratives about more remote areas but if you want to understand what people are still saying about Quebec and Ontario uh, nobody's going to be right buying books about that because it's too familiar by now so you have to look at what uh, tourist railway companies in particular, steamship companies, the promotional literature they're putting out, what they're saying that people should look at and how they're describing, like today's tourism brochures, how they're describing the land, the population and so on. And, uh, and then you have a major shift again in the 1920s when you move away from the steam era to the internal combustion era with automobiles. And so tourism or travel is three main periods, right? There's the, the sale you know, and just carriage era up until the 1840s and the steam era, steamships. And I've written quite a lot about steam, the Union Steamship Company and all of that, steamship uh, tourism in, the, in British Columbia coast. And then uh, the automobile era, which I don't write about, but which, you know, quite a few people, Ben Bradley, for example, are writing about in British Columbia, how British Columbia opens up and, and how, you know, places like Bowen Island, where I live, were major... Uh, places for people to go in the summer from Vancouver to have company picnics or to camp or whatever. Um, once uh, the roads are, road network is improved in the 1950s, Bowen Island becomes on, you know, unknown and people start doing their, their uh, camping and uh, traveling uh, much further, much further afield. Uh, so, major tr in terms of the tourist industry, there's a major shift going on. And Bradley writes about how provincial parks are created, road so historic sites, all these things are created to attract tourists so they will use the roads. Just like in Bowen Island, the Union Steamship Company establishes campgrounds and hotels and all that to get people to use their steamships so they will profit from that. So it's usually the transportation companies, if you want to call them that, who are pushing the tourist industry in many ways. Until the automobile era, but even then, you know, the government is doing it, right? The government is creating the parks and creating the historic sites and even some private entrepreneurs as well.